Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining. My name is Bridget Cole, and I'm Programs Manager at Nevada Cancer Coalition. And I want to thank everyone for joining our first webinar clinic in our Cancer Survivorship Project ECHO series. So today webina today's webinar is on fitness, a brief overview of positive impacts of fitness before, during, and after treatment. So the coalition, in collaboration with Project ECHO, is providing this series to primary care providers as an introduction to issues in cancer survivorship. So today, more than two-thirds of those diagnosed with cancer are told that they can expect to live at least five years after diagnosis. According to the American Cancer Society, in Nevada, there are currently an estimated 120,200 cancer survivors, and in 2019, 14,810 people will be diagnosed with cancer in Nevada. So this series hopes to address survivors' ongoing needs with improved outcomes and quality of life for cancer survivors. So Nevada Cancer Coalition is Nevada's statewide nonprofit. We bring together organizations and individuals across the state to collaborate on all things cancer. We provide information and education to both the community and healthcare providers, including housing the state's most comprehensive resource directory. Um, we develop and implement cancer prevention, early detection, and survivorship initiatives and programs. And we work on policies surrounding cancer and the improvement of our healthcare system. So please take a look at our website. We have a lot of really great tools and resources for providers. Um, we have infographics for early detection, um, screening, uh, key messages, social media toolkits, uh, recall reminder postcards, decision information guides, and much, much more. Um, and if you have any questions in regards to any of that information that's on our website, you can always reach out to me. Once again, my name is Bridget Cole, and um, my email address is Bridget at NevadaCancerCoalition.org, but you can find that on our website. Do we want to do introductions? Um, yeah, sure. Sorry. So let's go around the group here and see who we have uh, joining us this morning. So we'll start off uh, with Sue. Sue, can you hear us? Could you introduce yourself? Okay, maybe uh, Sue doesn't have a microphone, so we'll go to uh, Shauna Pascal. Could you introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Shauna Pascal, and I'm with the Women's Health Connection with the state of Nevada. Great, good to, good to have you this morning. Um, and then is it Ilian? Hi, uh, my name is Eileen. I'm a nurse navigator at uh, Sunrise Hospital, Las Vegas. Great, good morning. Thank you. Um, and then June, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, sure. Good morning. Hi, uh, I, my name is June Hunter and I'm senior manager for the American Cancer Society and also a five-year breast cancer survivor. I'm super happy to be here and uh, help launch the ECHO project. Thank you. Great, good morning, June. Um, C. Ponce. Oh, um, just a second here. Um, could you unmute yourself with the icon in the lower left corner of the Zoom window? Yep, go ahead, we should be able to hear you. Um, yep, we can hear you. Uh, hello. Yep, go ahead. Uh, this is Carmen Ponce, biostatistician with the Cancer Registry. Great, good morning. Uh, Dr. Levine. Hi, I'm Mordechai Levine, uh, a UNR geriatrician, also medical director here at Project ECHO. Thanks. And then uh, someone LRH, but it doesn't look like they've uh, joined the audio yet. So we'll go to uh, Mala. Hi, this is Mala. I'm a cancer registrar from California at uh, Sound Valley in the hospital. All right, thank you. Just a little trouble hearing you there, but no problem. Uh, uh, and uh, Robin Palmer. Robin, 
Robin, are you there? Do we have a microphone for you? Okay, maybe you know a microphone for Robin. So we have uh, somebody that's called in, uh, 775 area code 2308252. Could you introduce yourself? <clears throat> Okay. <laughs> well, um, that's all right. Thanks everyone for joining us again. Um, so let's start it off, see if anyone has any questions that they want to bring up uh, before we get going. Anything that you'd like to ask, feel free to uh, take yourself off mute or write in using the chat function. Oh, we just had a group. Uh, D Garcia, could you all introduce yourselves? Good morning. I'm Dora with Access to Healthcare. I'm the Medical Discount Program Manager. Good morning. I'm Karina, and I'm a Cancer Care Coordinator. Hi, everyone. I'm Denise, and I'm also a Cancer Care Coordinator. Excellent. Great to have you all this morning. Thank you. Okay, so we'll get going here then. <clears throat> so I would like to introduce you to today's presenter, Christina Gardner. Uh, Christina is a cancer exercise specialist for St. Mary's Fitness Center Cancer Rehabil Rehabilitation Program. She's been in the fitness industry for 18 years and is a certified trainer in group fitness, Pilates, and cancer exercise. So Christina has a passion for teaching and helping others find confidence in moving their bodies no matter what is going on with their health. As Christina puts it, fitness is never a destination, it is a journey through the mind and body. Her goal is always to find a way to make fitness fun for all to enjoy. And I just have to say, she absolutely does that. Um, she's quite amazing. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Christina Gardner. Hi, good morning everyone. Like um, Bridget said, I'm Christina Gardner. Uh, I am one of the cancer exercise specialists at St. Mary's and um, for today's presentation I'm just going to go over pretty much the basics and then introduce the actual program that we do at St. Mary's um, and how it's open to all cancer related uh, patients, survivors, um, and so you'll see that throughout the presentation today but the main focus is just kind of what exercise does for cancer and for the patient's um, mental health and um, etc so we'll go ahead and get started so our objectives today um, I'm just going to briefly talk about general benefits of exercise and um, the benefits of cancer survivor um, and then also the recommendations <laughs> that we have, not only us, but also um, one of our organizations that we work with. And then um, special considerations that we look at as a cancer exercise specialist um, when we go through the orientation process with our, um, our clients, we call them clients, not patients, um, but we, and then also kind of what the role holds for the um, really the rehabilitation program um, and how we work with um, other doctors and physical therapists in the um, industry. So some general exercise benefits. We all know it does control weight and reduce obesity, um, lowers the hormone levels, um, reduces fatigue and anxiety and pain, um, also reducing the risk of inflammation, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, or metabolic syndrome, and uh, some cancers. Uh, we also, through exercise, improve bone, muscle, balance, flexibility, um, a gen gestational function, immune system function, and ability to perform activities daily, um, increase your chances of living longer. So as we know, exercise is great for our body regardless of where we are um, with our health. Some of the benefits to cancer, um, we also, we've seen a, a link to um, breast cancer in particular um, with different, or, uh, different cancers, sorry, 13 different cancers. Exercise has been shown to reduce the risk um, of developing breast cancer in women by 12% and, um, and then body fat and weight gain before and around the time of diagnosis can increase the risk of recurrence and death and in prostate cancer. 
Um, exercise has been shown to reduce the risk of developing colon cancer up to 30 or up to 40 percent and uh, recent evidence has shown the obesity linked to the risk of cancer progression um, so we're also finding that um, cancer thrives off of sugar and fat and so um, the higher the obesity um, rate with the patient at the time of diagnosis the higher risk. Um, studies have shown that exercise can reduce the risk of cancer recurrence up to um, 60%, which is pretty high um, considering um, that just a daily movement, 30 minutes a day can make um, in our clients and our patients. Um, the recommendation with our cancer, Amer um, the American College of Sports Medicine recommends the following for all of the adults, um, 150 minutes of moderate to intensity exercise per week. That's 30 minutes, five days a week or every other day. Um, and we look at cardiovascular strength, flexibility, um, and then just activities going on hikes and um, what that can do for the body. Um, and then how can this be broken up? A lot of people that maybe have never exercised or have been exercising and then recently been diagnosed, um, this seems like a lot for them. So um, as a cancer exercise specialist, we really try to break this up for them in the sense of giving them um, you know, 10 minutes of cardio, 10 minutes of strength, um, if they're up to it. And um, I'll talk a little bit more about the fatigue and all of that as we move further. Um, and if they can't meet, the, meet these recommendations, we really try to start very slow, like go for a brisk walk, two minutes, get up from the couch, walk around the couch, come back and sit back down. So we really try to work with the clients um, to just get them moving just a tiny bit um, to get them, you know, feeling confident of where they're at. Um, and how much is needed to reduce the risk of certain cancers, we kind of talked about that, and we'll, I'll go further into that. And then um, we also talk about being with a certified professional is always important just because we know what we can do for them um, moving forward in their progression of where they're at in the stage of their um, health. So the special considerations that we look at uh, when they come for an orientation, um, we look at their pain level, um, have they had surgery, is it chronic, and um, you know, the neuropathic. And then uh, one of the big things we see is neuropathy. And um, those of you that don't know what neuropathy is, it's the numbness and tingling usually in hands and their feet. So it, it messes with their um, balance and gait issues. So trying to get them to balance on um, a quadruped or just on the floor um, is really difficult. So we really take that into consider consideration because balance is super important. Um, muscle imbalances, if they've had surgeries, mastectomies, um, you know, low, any hysterectomies, um, those, you know, they have to cut through muscle, they cut through the nerve system, so it also um, causes muscle imbalances, which then um, goes along the lines with their balance and gait. And so we have to be um, considered of the surgeries um, and if they had reconstruction of how to progress them um, in their fitness journey. Um, the other main point that we look at is their range of motion. We do um, test their range of motion. If they have limited range of motion, a lot of it is because of the scar adhesions, um, auxiliary cording, if it was a, uh, if it's a breast cancer client. Um, and then most important we look at is the cardiotoxic effect. This is um, with a lot of them are on prescription or are going through chemo. And, um, and so we have to really take that in effect because it does affect the heart um, and not progressing them too fast and on the cardio side. So these are all the special considerations that we do um, through our orientation process with our clients. Um, so we do have a question here. Okay. Can you address your recommendation on how soon a cancer patient should start an activity program? Yes, um, so normally, depending on their surgery, if, if they had surgery, we do, they have to start with um, usually an outpatient, so a physical therapist, um, and then that's usually about six weeks with a physical therapist, and then once they've gone through that process, then they would recommend them to phase two, which is our program, um, and then if they had no surgeries or whatnot, they can start right away. Um, as long as the doctor gives them a go-ahead, uh, go we ask for a doctor's release, saying they're okay to exercise. Um, and if they are, then they can come straight to our program. They don't have to go through uh, physical therapy first. 
So um, with that being said, um, with the St. Mary's Cancer Rehabilitation Program, um, there is a, um, there's phase one and phase two, um, kind of briefly described just before. Um, outpatient therapy, they're working with the physical therapist and occupational therapist or some speech, um, depending where the cancer was. Um, in my particular experience, I've worked with somebody that had throat cancer and they've totally taken out the whole side of um, the muscle on the side of her neck um, and so I've really had to take do special considerations with her um, with her speech and um, and just laying down on her back in general um, and so through this process she got released but um, <clears throat> it's really important um, especially with breast cancer, um, if they've had one lymph node taken out, they are at risk for lymphedema. If they had any um, radiation, they're at risk for lymphedema. So um, they will see the specialist first to make sure that the lymphedema is controlled. Um, they get the education and the treatment and what they need to do to manage it. Um, and that will help reduce the risk. Um, they get mild fascia release. Um, if they did have like mastectomy, so around the scarring, um, trying to get more of that motor skill and the muscle balancing back together before um, they start a exercise program. Um, another big thing is fatigue when they are going through treatment or they come out of treatment. Um, most patients or clients are super fatigued, so working with the therapist first to make sure that they are at a level of, that they can start exercising um, then they release them. Um, another big one is the pelvic floor dysfunction um, for both men and women. So I see um, prostate cancer and I, you know, about 90% of my clients are women with breast cancer, but I also have had um, prostate, um, two men that with prostate cancer and the pelvic floor and the dysfunction is super, super important. So that's a big thing I focus on, at least in my class. Um, <clears throat> And then after they're released and the therapist is good to go, then they come to us and this is where they would come for their orientation and get information about our program and um, we get to learn about their um, journey and what's been going on with their health. Um, and then part of our program includes they get two days a week um, with a specialist and then they also get health coaching. The health coaching really helps on the nutrition side, um, just their daily, like what are they doing daily to keep them mentally healthy, physically healthy, um, and then get them ongoing. So that is free to them, part of the program. Um, and then, like I said, with the nutritionist, they can work, they get two nutritionist appointments as well. If they want more, they can, um, but this is part of the free part of the program. And then we also um, do massage, not me particularly, but we offer massage at the facility so it's just an, a, an additional um, thing that they can do as part of the program so starting with a cancer specific re um, rehab program um, like I said we, we are certified um, exercise specialists um, it is an advanced qualification um, to develop um, the fitness professionals for um, higher education and to be able to work um, with patients during and after treatment um, into their survivorship. And so um, that's what makes us a little more qualified than just a regular personal trainer who um, can definitely work with this population, um, but just may not have the um, skills to look and um, progress them effectively in a program in a fitness program. Um, it gives structure, so we all write our own programming. Um, we make sure we go, you know, with each one of our patients, we have five to 10 of them. Um, and so we give structure to each patient. Each patient is different, um, different issues. And so it gives them to, uh, gives them to work in a, a safe environment um, with a specialist. Um, we do know how to progress those exercises, um, depending on if they have lymphedema, if they just had surgery, um, all those special consideration that I talked about earlier in the um, presentation we all um, we start with this progression um, based off where they are um, modification limitations we um, you know we really get to build that one-on-one -on -one relationship with them so we get to know what their limitations are um, so we are progressing them safely um, they do have feedback on um, progress. We do two initial assessments. So um, we start with the initial one when they first come and see us. We could do their range of motion, their cardio, um, strength, um, 
and for their initial and then we would test them again at uh, at their six week mark and to see where they progress so they can see about weight loss you know the big goal is not to lose weight but you know, with the obesity we really try to um, focus on you know to help them gain muscle and so they are getting that feedback with progress um, support and encouragement these groups are huge for all survivors um, they have this special bond and so um, it really allows them not only just to come and exercise but they also have that one-on-one uh, -on -one time and bonding moment to um, you know share their experience and they get to um, enjoy the process along with others who are in survivorship and then also the expertise, as I already kind of talked about, we do have, we're just more specialized in, with this population, um, and so we can carry on through that. So, um, like I was talking about with the fatigue, this is one of the things we see quite often. Um, if they are in treatment or just coming out of treatment, cancer-related fatigue is really big. Um, so we use this scale of, kind of where they are, um, as far as how they're feeling that day and how to budget their energy. Um, if they just want to do a nice brisk or soft walk around the track, then that's what they're going to do. Um, we just really encourage more of uh, movement. A little movement goes a long way. So even if it's two minutes that you're participating in the pro, you know, in the class that day, um, it allows them just to get that extra um, energy that they need for whatever it is um, that they're fighting for. Um, lymphedema is uh, a bigger thing I see like I said more in our breast cancer um, we do have some ovarian cancer um, patients as well and um, that's really big to just be aware of lymphedema is dangerous if it gets out of control um, and so we are specialized in exercises to help with lymphedema but also um, if they are at risk um, the progression is super important in how we um, progress our patient or our clients um, who do have lymphedema and most of them will wear a sleeve um, and so that also helps with the prevention and um, depending on the severity of their lymphedema. So building community is one of, uh, I would say one of the biggest parts that maybe is not so much talked about. Exercise is exercise, a bicep curl is a bicep curl. However, it's all how we program and how we progress our clients. But building community is probably one of the biggest pieces to this. Um, the biggest one is their self-esteem like a lot of them after they have treatment or surgery they are not feeling good about themselves so to be amongst others is um, very important for them to help with their survivorship and um, just kind of rebuild that self-esteem whether it's you know hey you did one push-up and it was on the wall like it, it just gives them a little bit of love and towards what they're going through um, the self-confidence um, going back to surgery and treatments uh, you know they are very insecure about what has gone their body has changed and so um, just making sure that you see them as the person is super important um, and then being around other survivors um, is really big in this process of their healing um, mentally and physically. Um, their strength um, during and after is quite remarkable. We don't have huge stats from our program um, of what we see because um, I would say half and half are either out of treatment or in treatment, um, but we do see um, at least an 86 percent um, like percent of our patients and clients are meeting their goals as far as the strength, balance, cardio. Um, so it is a pretty high percent of what we're seeing um, with the clients that are coming to us. And then um, with our particular program, um, on average, um, we're seeing about a two pound weight loss um, at each um, check mark. And so, no, that doesn't sound like a lot, but also we're, we're fighting against, um, you know, a lot of them are on hor hormone inhibitors, which doesn't help with the weight loss. So a lot of times they'll gain weight. But as long as we can keep them building muscle and building strength, um, it does help at least maintain what they have, um, which is super important. Um, Another thing that we also see is we do a chair, a sit to stand chair, 30 seconds, and we're, we're seeing about a five uh, repetition. So strength-wise on that strength and balance, we're seeing um, 
five more than what they usually do, and that's on average. Um, again, these are low numbers, but um, there's a lot of adversities that we are against, um, especially if they are in treatment. Um, but the, the fact that we see progression within six weeks is quite remarkable with these with this population. Um, and most of all, the zest of life, like they love coming and interacting with people, which is so fun. So um, that's the most important. Is, like if their mind is good, they're going to be good. So that's all I got for you. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, uh, I, got, I got more. Sorry, we have uh, one other question. Uh, so while some cancer patients lose weight during and after treatment, many gain from the medication, steroids, etc. Do you address this weight gain issue? We do not address the weight gain. Like, hey, Sal, you gained like three pounds. What's going on? Like, we usually know that they're on a medication. We know that they, uh, what they're going through. Um, again, like I said, our most important part is um, watching their fatigue. And if they are higher on that fatigue level, what can we do to keep them moving? Can you sit and stand in the chair five times, you know, for one minute, you know, and we just try to progress on a slower basis. Um, the weight is such a big issue because a lot of them don't want to gain weight, but they are gaining weight because of the hormones. Um, we address it in a positive way versus like, you gain five pounds, what is going on? Like we pretty much know why they're gaining weight. So um, to answer your question, we try to do it in a positive aspect of what can we do. Increase their strength um, would be one of the bigger ones for us to like, um, to help balance that out. Can I go? Yeah, you can go. Um, so the best practices of care and what we're seeing, um, usually, when a patient comes to us, they've been usually either newly diagnosed or they just came out of their treatment. And this is kind of the steps that they will go through. Um, the pre but if they can do um, any pre-rehab, like come to us during or while they're going through treatment, it usually helps with the um, their outcome later on. And then um, if they have impairments, this is where they would go and see a physical therapist first, depending how severe those impairments are after surgery. Um, if it's pretty mild, then the physical therapist will usually release them. They'll still be working with physical therapy, um, but also be working with us at the same time. Um, if they've had no impairments, then the doctor can release them straight to our program. And then our ultimate goal is to get them in a, um, to have general um, exercise and wellness um, again through their life and give them the tools that they need to maintain um, a healthy lifestyle um, for them moving forward. So why do you why is it 90% women? Why do you not have more men? Do you expect do you think? Um, I think one of the bigger reasons why we have women is because when this program came to St. Mary's, it was um, developed around breast cancer. Um, we started working with uh, Moms on the Run, a local breast cancer organization, and um, they really came involved and were giving scholarships. And so women were just kind of the target um, at that time. And um, the certification actually rallied around breast cancer more than prostate and you know pancreatic cancer. Um, but we're starting to see, which I love, we're actually starting to see more men come into the program. And not only that, this program hasn't really been presented outward um, to make other you know physicians and nurses understand like any cancer person can come to or client can come to our program regardless of what cancer is um scholarship wise it's really just breast cancer so i think that's why we, we're seeing a higher number of breast cancer um okay let me finish it <laughs> so um with all that being said, um, Cassie Goodman over at St. Mary's, she is the medical fitness supervisor. Um, so if you had any additional questions about the program um, or would like to come in contact with myself, um, that is the information. That's her email and phone number to get in contact with her. Um, St. Mary's Outpatient Rehab, who we work really closely with, closely with, um, that information is there. They have two lymphedema specialists um, there, that's why um, 
we do work really close and there's actually an additional one at Renown now and um, so if you're looking for a lymphedema specialist um, definitely reach out to St. Mary's or Renown there um, for their lymphedema specialists and then um, who I'm certified through and uh, we got most of this information from is the Cancer Exercise Training Institute um, this been around since 1995 she's been certifying um, all of us trainers for advanced qualification um, so you can go to their website check out they have great information on exercise um, all different types of cancer survivorship um, and anything you really want to know more about um, if you are looking to get certified in this um, that's where you would go um, and then a partner is Medical Fitness Network. This is a newer network um, who is working um, with medical fitness um, participants and trainers um, to get out into the field of, um, to work with physicians and insurance companies to help um, everybody understand like what we're trying to do. Um, we're not just trainers on the side trying to help um, this population. We're actually more advanced qualified. And if we can be more involved with the medical fitness side, will insurance um, come out? So they're really trying to get bridge the gap between physicians and um, exercise specialists to really help um, this population with insurance and funds if they can't afford this type of programming. And on that note, do you think that that, um is there anything that you know everyone can do to kind of help support getting exercise recognized as a <laughs> medical, you know, um, medically covered service? It, that's a t it's a tough question because um, I think with the network now being out there, we're getting more recognition or recognition about it. Um, but the best thing is just you know. Ex the more um, educated you are about our program or what else is out there and knowing our qualifications and knowing that we do specialize in this population um, and the credentials that go behind it and supporting us in this movement would be huge. Um, and then, you know, also going mm -hmm. to that network and just seeing the work that they are doing to try to bridge that gap between the trainers and the um, insurance company and the physicians to help them understand that, no, this is a good program. They're seeing outcomes. Mm -hmm. And I think um, studies, I get, you know, studies, speak volume so if we can get more research also in this field we would be able to back a lot of our work that we're doing and are there other um, fitness centers that are doing this in Reno that have cancer exercise specialists no all right now um, st. Mary's is the leading person you know um, place that is doing this type of work. Um, as an exercise trainer, I can go out to others um, to be in, you know, to go to other facilities and um, bring this programming to them. And um, that's one thing I would, you know, love to do. But um, as far as like the structure and everything, St. Mary's is the only pro um, facility at this time. Yeah, I think that addresses a, a question that came in and that asks, uh, are all your clients receiving treatment at St. Mary's? No, uh, actually, um, okay. yeah, so not all of them are receiving treatment at St. Mary's. They, um, they're they all over. We get people from Truckee and, um, and coming from Renown, and uh, it's all over because what happened with the program, if they come into our program, they actually get a membership with the program. So they have full access to our facility. Um, they see us twice a week. They get the health coaching and the nutrition, um, but it's also a membership to the facility. So it doesn't matter where you live and where you are, um, you can join the program. Uh, who pays? Well, <laughs> the, usually the, and that's where I was kind of talking about with bridging the gap between insurance companies and, um, you know, with the whole medical field. Um, but normally it's the, the client that will pay. Um, there are scholarships available. Um, we've had a couple incidents where um, insurance has paid and uh, that client in particular went to their insurance company, told them what they're doing. We wrote up a little document um, stating what we do and that their insurance company actually ended up paying for the program um, for them. So we have small movement towards the insurance 
area, but um, usually it is the client that is paying. And scholarship is only available to breast cancer um, patients at the time because that's just the organization that we've worked with. I know we've worked with Nevada Cancer Society, to, um, and I believe they've supported and gotten a, um, a couple of scholarships as well, um, but it's very small. The most we see scholarships coming from is Moms on the Run, and the um, clients are usually in treatment at the time um, for the scholarship. What is the cost? The cost is uh, $360 for um, a six week program, and then, um, but they can progress. So after that six weeks, if they wanna stay on, then they can, um, and that's when they work with membership and get, that's not my sales side, but <laughs> at least the program as a whole, um, it is $360 for the six weeks, and they get the full membership to the facility. They can take all the group, classes, um, they, you know, we have water aerobics, we have water therapy, um, we have a lot of additional classes that they can take if they are um, filling up to it. And then like I said, they work with a specialist twice a week and they get the um, health coaching and nutrition part. Hi, this is June Hunter. Can I make a comment? Go ahead. Awesome. Um, and kind of a testimonial to this program. Uh, I did go through it actually twice in a couple of different phases in my cancer, you know, post-cancer treatment. And um, it was vital to me, to my recovery. And it, it took a long time. It took like a year and a half. And I went into the program, I went out of the program, then I got back into the program. But so much of it, as I said, was vital to my, uh, my recovery and my, um, kind of getting back to who I was and so forth. But what the program was most important to me was they knew how to take me through the program step by step. I, always, I had been an exerciser my whole life and so forth. And my, you know, I just went through this 360 kind of thing. And so they uh, took me step by step, like I couldn't train the way I used to. And once I got that mindset, then I started really recovering and still do it. Uh, it's still helping me every day. I, you know, while we're talking a lot about Reno, this needs to expand to Las Vegas and help so many people in Las Vegas. And, uh, you know, I don't know how we can do that, but let's look for funding or whatever that would take and uh, really try to help more people beyond our area. Thank you. Thank you, June. Thank you, June. I did want to say um, the Y uh, does have their Live Strong program in Las Vegas. Um, and I believe we do promote that on our website as well. So um, that is free access to the YMCA and their Live Strong program for cancer survivors. So um, I have to say, I also went through the rehabilitation program with Christina. She was, she was my um, cheerleader. <laughs> and it's amazing. It truly is amazing just how it changes your mindset. And here you have been beat up and, you know, are just feeling horrible. And it, it gives you so much and so much strength. And um, it's just a really great program. So. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Carmen, did you have a question or comment? Yes, uh, I have a, a comment and a question. How long this program has been working? Um, at St. Mary's, it started five years ago. Um, and I would say I've been part of the program for three years. And um, since I've been part of it, it has progressed quite you know, a lot actually. Um, we're seeing um, a lot more um, patients and clients coming in before treatment, during treatment, after treatment. And then when they're in treatment, we're also seeing, you know, we'll see a decline and we'll see it, you know, come back and depending on where their treatment is. But um, at St. Mary's, it's been going on for five years currently. Okay. This is a program that has a very, very important potential. To, to help. My, my suggestion is not a suggestion, it's like a wish, because from the statistical or epidemiological point of view, survival in time 
is, is the indicator that, that we get. I believe that this program, if you can contact some medical or doctors, or I exactly don't know, in order to analyze your results in time by stage at diagnosis, because I believe that the early stages could help not only the could get not only the quality, the best quality of life or survival, they can get more time. Yes. Then I believe that this is very important to explore these results because science is talking about the high association uh, between sugar and cancer, uh, uh, fat and cancer. Then I believe that this program is really, really having a very high potential to to give results. Yeah. So that question. Just a quick one. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Carmen. So so true. And um, it would be wonderful. It would be amazing if this was something that was covered through insurance, especially because fitness is an evidence based. You know. Uh, preventative um, for recurrence of cancer and as well as just those long-term outcomes for patients. Did you have and, a comment, Christina? And just another comment, the University of here. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the University of Nevada, Reno, um, has uh, through their Office of Medical Research has recently um, opened or expanded a clinical research center. So that might be, um, at least here in the north, that might be somewhere where we can reach out to. Um, they're looking for, um, uh, to connect uh, organizations and people with medical students to do this kind of research. Um, as June pointed out, we need also to connect with the South, um, but there are obviously, there's the um, UNLV Medical School that's there, there's Truro Medical School, so there are opportunities, so um, those on the phone and us here in the room, uh, you know, as we're if there are connections that you can help provide, then that will be beneficial for us in moving this forward. I was gonna say too, um, the numbers that I presented, those are all through us. Like we um, just track them. Um, Cassie, the medical supervisor, um, she um, takes all the data. It's, <laughs> you know, long work, but she, um, through every six weeks, we go through um, every patient that we have or client that we have, and we review all those numbers, and she documents all this, so it's really not like science, you know, it's just us documenting and trying to see, like, there is a need clearly here, and there is progression, and um, we're seeing success with it, um, and so, and I know Cassie has a lot more numbers than what I presented. This was just based off of 2017, because she was still doing 2018 numbers, um, but she does have, you know, pretty cool numbers to show and present, um, just based off of the five years we've been doing the program. And is the best way for someone to get into the program to be referred by their physician, or can anyone, you know, walk so into the fit? Yeah, so yeah, refer. So if they know about the program, and I, I believe I um, there's an attached um, flyer about our program to this presentation. Um, you guys can print and give to your clients or to your patients, and um, they are more than welcome to come to St. Mary's and check out and get more information. They'll meet with one of the specialists and get the tour and the orientation of what they're all about. Um, so it does not have to be uh, physician referred. They can just come in. The biggest thing is getting the word out that this program exists and that we, you know, it's available to anybody that has been through or is going through treatment. Um, even if they're five years out of their survivorship, they are still part of this program. Um, is there any attrition in the program? What's attrition? Uh, the like dropout. Oh, yeah. Um, there's, 
I would <laughs> drop out would be um, depending on if they're in treatment. I think we obviously um, treatment can change their trajectory of their health. Um, so depending on where they're at, some will come you know, for if they're in between treatment, they'll come for like the two that week and then I won't see them for a week. Um, and then if they, we don't see them for a couple more weeks, um, that's when we reach out. Um, and if they do have to stop for their period of treatment, um, we freeze their account so they don't lose their time, um, which is really nice. So if they're only supposed to be here, you know, for the three weeks or the six weeks and they can't make it, um, we freeze it, they can come back and it basically starts where they ended um, so we have that option for them and as far as like a dropout never coming back um, I don't know those particular numbers but I can speak from my own experience um, I see like I said I mainly see if they're in treatment that's when I see the drop-off um, but then I always will see them like a couple weeks later and um, the community that we build around it I feel I like I'm texting these people at this point I'm like where are you at how are you Bridget can say I like how are you hon just checking in um, so we just really build that one-on-one -on -one connection with our groups as well um, any other questions out there please feel free to uh, take yourself off mute if you're on video, raise your hand and I can take you off mute or write in using the chat function. Um, any age? Yeah, any age. Um, sadly to say, like we've had, um, I have an 18 year old that I work with. So um, yes, it's any age that where we come into problems is we haven't really worked with the adolescent, you know, like our young, uh, really young population, um, but doesn't mean we can't. Um, it really comes down to um, safety at the gym. Um, I think the youngest is like 14 as long as they're going through the orientation. So it, there's room for conversation there, but um, the youngest that I have worked with is 18. Oh, and one thing I wanted to say about the gym, that this is amazing as a mom. There is also part of the benefit of your membership is you. there's a daycare there as well. So, you know, for um, parents that are going through treatment, they would be able to take their children and, and have um, them watch their, the daycare while they work out. So that's a really wonderful benefit. As long as, as they're well. six months or older. As long as they're six months or older, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Bridget, did you have any other questions? Um, no, I, I don't think so. I think you covered everything. Yes, I have one more comment. I see that someone's um, participating out of Elko. Yeah. Um, do you, I would, just a question as to what kind of need you might see there. Are there facilities there in Elko that might be appropriate if there was uh, someone with um, Christina's kind of training that came into your area? Um, sorry, I think that's Alan, that's our, uh, he helps for our IT. Oh, okay, um, hi Alan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, He's like, I don't know. <laughs> there. Are, is there anyone in a rural area though that uh, would benefit from Christina coming out and doing a program? Uh, <laughs> Tamisha, could you speak about that? Tamisha, are you there? Do we have audio for you today? I know there's uh, Vegas. We have Sunrise. Okay. Um, so there is another question here. Um, does a doc uh, prescribe, so like prescribe them to come to your program? Um, it's a good question because as a prescribed scenario, um, you would think insurance would cover something that was prescribed from their physician. Um, the one way we've been able to kind of work around this, and um, Cassie can kind of speak more to it, is we... Um, we talked to the insurance company and we compared it to like a cardiac rehab, like what they are doing in cardiac rehab. Um, 
when they're released from their physician. That's basically what they're doing in our phase two program. Um, they are supervised by a specialist and um, at that point, that's when insurance, you know, as long as they had like a really good description of what we were doing, um, that her insurance um, followed. The other way some of our patients are um, paying for the program is through their health savings account if they have that. Um, and so we're along the lines with like acupuncture acupuncture, massage, um, you know, we kind of fall into that category. So if people are using their health savings account for those things, they can use it for this particular program as well. Yeah, and that gets me thinking about like a lot of the wellness programs that a lot of employers are trying to get people to, you know, get up, get yeah. moving, get your steps, et cetera. So I wonder if that might be kind of a it is a, know, it's a gateway, gateway yeah, yeah, a gateway to do it, um, you know, and just because it's a specific population, it's a big population, so yes. you would think it would be something <laughs> that um, insurance company would take a bigger look at it, but mm -hmm. again, I think it comes down to funding for research, too, because numbers speak, um, and if they're seeing progression here, then there's a possibility that this can be covered by insurance, and, um, you know, not if you're going through treatment, it's so expensive. So yeah, $360 may not be a lot to some, but it's a lot to a lot of, um, especially the some of the, the older population, if they are on a budget, you know, they're retired, and, um, that's where we kind of see the, the hard stuff. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions as we start to wrap up here? The yeah, so um, thank you so much, Christina. I just have to say I am so excited about this whole series um, and just the information as well as, you know, everyone being able to put their heads together and, and see this is such a need in the community. Um, and you guys are just doing such amazing work. Thank you. So, um, one thing I wanted to say is please mark your calendars. Uh, we have our upcoming Nevada Cancer Control Summit, which is on September 16th, 2019. So it's a one day statewide conference featuring presentations on targeted topics across the cancer spectrum. Um, so we're gonna have a lot of wonderful speakers um, at this conference this year. Um, and if you would like to learn more, please do go to our website and um, you will see some more information and you can, um, I believe, register early as well. Um, so next clinic. Um, our next clinic in the series is on February 22nd at 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. The topic is on um, survivors of childhood cancer. Uh, the presenter is going to be Dr. Robert Raphael. He's an Associate Hematology Oncology Medical Director at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital in Oakland. So he will be calling in remotely, um, and we are very grateful. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Thanks, everyone. We hope to see you in a couple weeks. Thank you.